might be in business. <laughs> the it's footage like the and perfect stuff. Size. We need that breeze, honestly, get the mosquitoes out of here. He's coming right towards me, bro. That's where I gotta go. <laughs> he knows where the fish are. He's big. What kind of snake is that? They literally said, bro, you get paid $12 million a year. Like if you're broke at the end of your career, shame on you. Yeah. Like that's yeah. absurd. Yeah, like, and it's like I get the fines are crazy, but at the end of the day, don't do shit where you don't get fined. Well, he's the one that's kicking people in the nuts all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were talking about it on the radio today and they were just like, they were like, you have made, he's made like $177 million. And I'm just thinking like, if you put, say, okay, say you get taxed on 60% of that. Yep. You're still taking home like 30 or at, like, I, I don't even know what the math is, but Me say neither. you get paid 200, two, $200 million and you, you get taxed 60% of that. You're still taking home 80 million bucks. <laughs> yeah. You put, you put $10 million into a, into like some sort of like fund, mutual fund, some anything sort of fund that yeah. like yeah. gives you continuous returns. Dude, you're making five hundred thousand dollars a year by doing nothing. It's crazy to think about, honestly, how big the contracts have gotten. You just could do the clap if you want and just start recording. Oh yeah, good call. I just come out there. All right. We gotta do a. Needs to be a nice like louder. <laughs> sure. Action. <laughs> Wait, let me just do it at the same yeah, you time. You do it too. Right? Ready? Three, two, one. Good enough. We should be able to do it with that. <laughs> now, what's that do? That helps sync up the audio. It basically just makes like a a sound wave on the on the editing software, so then you can sync it up. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it's like a big spike. Yeah. And you just like drag it. Because otherwise, you'd have to like try to read the words. Which oh, is that a sounds pain terrible. In the ass. And it wouldn't I, be possible even. Like for I think us. I remember hearing about that one of those days in film class. Film class. Fun fun fact about Alex, I was the editor in chief of the Hawkeye newspaper. Oh, I think you told me about that. All actually. I all I did was make videos and like hype videos for our student section. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you were that guy. I was the the student section guy, I guess. That was my responsibility. I couldn't edit a paper to save my life though, so. <laughs> Where are we? we are out in nature, folks. We are fishing at Shannon Undisclosed. Creek. Undisclosed location. <laughs> Undisclosed. You can't be burning spots. <laughs> we can't be telling any spots today. But we're out here having fun. Josh's first time fly fishing. Yep, and we're trying to figure it out. He's a pretty good caster. <laughs> Try my best. I love like narrating it as you guys are fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like that Morgan Freeman in the wild. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched that? Oh yeah. I've seen it. It's the best. Haven't seen shit all day. <sighs> Actually, we did see that one. Golden. Yeah, that little. Little Palomino. Not that little. That was kind of cool. Not little, but big. But if he's around, then where's everybody else? Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you, this is the spot. It's feeling it. Man. Such an art, I'm trying to figure it out. You can see how people get really, really obsessed with it. Oh yeah. It's just such a challenge to like, get everything right that you need to, to catch the trout, you know? Yeah. Gotta be at the right height, gotta be uh, right weight. Lines gotta be tight. Slot into the mix.
Tyler, you got any big hunting trips planned? Oh, this this year it's gonna be a big one, man. Going really? out to Colorado twice. Twice. Let's elk, go. Elk and mule deer. One. I'm going out in September for elk, and then I'm going out in November for mule deer. That's sick. Or right, well, October, end of October. But yeah, <clears throat> I'm pumped, man. How much bigger are the deer in Colorado? So are they mule, bigger or what's the... So mule deer, the species of mule deer, probably about like, I don't know what the exact ratio would be, but I would say like on average, mule deer probably like 25% bigger than whitetail. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Oh man. All right, this will be the fifth time that I have had to tie on a new leader today. <laughs> the tackle is just not cooperating at all. I feel like if there was a spot these fish would be be somewhere over here. Yeah. Fish, it's cold. fish, fish. It's deep. You gotta give them the call. It's real deep over here. You just can't see anything. Oh no. Uh oh. Nice. Got it. Broke off, damn it. Bro, my shit is just not cooperating today at all. That wind feels so good. Mm -hmm. It's so much nicer out here without the mosquitoes. Yeah, keeping those mosquitoes down, man. Those mosquitoes can stay away. I think I've gotten bit like eight times. <laughs> Me too. How is it camping, dude? Like trying to fight off some of those bugs? Not, not as bad as you would think. It just depends on the weather. The weather? Yeah, it really depends on the weather. Like if it's, if it's like there's a little breeze, it's not bad at all. Yeah. And like in the winter or like in the fall, you know? Uh-huh. Like the bugs aren't, aren't like terrible. Yeah, during hunting season, you really don't have to worry about it as yeah. much. Especially here up north. I mean, like if you go further south, and also earlier in the season, the bugs can be bad. But, oh yeah. But for the most part, um, summertime you're just kind of asking for it. Yeah, summertime it's like whenever it's real bad. You get squared away over there. Haha. Uh -huh. You get squared away over there. Dude, no. What's it is going like on? brutal. I don't know what the hell is up with my line right now. Alex is gonna need a Stonies after today. I got our branding going on right now. And I'm getting this fly out. You guys should have brought some Sometimes you gotta stonies. pray to the fish gods, dude, just to stonies. like work what with were you. you thinking? Should have brought some Stonies and you could just like keep it in the water. Yeah. Float it down. Float it we downstream. Dude, there was a styrofoam uh, cooler. Cooler that was right by the cover bridge. Yeah, there was like, uh, there was like. Did you see that? There was like, uh, like. Um, night crawlers in there, like worms. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they were worms. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> worm fishermen. I <laughs> us today, fellas. I do love a little worm action, though, fishing. I bet Nothing you we'd have more it, action if like. we're using worms right now. <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, I just had a little, little tiny thing. I guess all the fish went home. This would be like a good ASMR video. You just yes. play it, it's like an hour long, and it's just people talking about random stuff and like the sounds of nature. Gotta love the sounds of nature, man. Uh-oh. Do you well, guys feel that white noise helps you sleep? Dude, I can't sleep without white noise. Without noise? Yeah. Really? 
Oh my gosh, dude. I, I was actually crazy for like a brief period, like probably like two months. I would have to have a fan on full blast. And then I would also put earplugs in earplugs Jeez. and a fan. <laughs> so like any noise that I could hear, like, dude, I just can't, I can't deal with like quiet whenever I'm sleeping. My thoughts <laughs> it depends. just go crazy. It I'm, depends on where I'm at, I guess. I just got like a hyper, I don't even know if that would be called ADHD or what, but like, just like, I can't relax if I'm just sitting there. Yeah, I, All right, uh, guys. if I'm like in a hotel or something, um, I have to, like the air conditioner is always the worst. If it's a shitty air conditioner and you just hear like, you're kidding. Rrr, you don't like that. Night. The you only, like that? That's the only time where I like the noise. I don't like it if it's not like consistent. You know what I mean? I, I see what you're saying. Oh, it gets way deep over here, Josh. Dude, I, I'm, I'm about to just sell out for these little tiny, these Guppies. little tiny chubs. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I think the deepest spot is like right over here. That's what it looks like. Smash. Glad you could join us. Yeah, me too, dude. You know, today <laughs> just has not been my day of tackle. Charking it up. How's that? <laughs> I also don't know what I'm doing, so that probably doesn't help. <laughs> where, uh, where does the camera like got us going out to, Josh? Like, right oh, you hear that eagle? Uh, you guys should be in it right now. I'm probably out of it. Probably out. Okay. I might be in Tyler's though. Huh. Well, this is fun, guys. Recording a podcast while fishing. <laughs> Who would have thought? thought? Something that we wanted to do. What kind of bird is that? That's a crow. That's a crow, for sure. Oh, That's yeah. crow, for sure. Has to be. There's something else chasing What's that it, falling it? Like a it? hawk? Red tail hawk? I want to say it's a... I think it was a red tail. I okay. think it was a red tail. We're back at my... Dude, this is, this is where I learned how to bird. Up in these territories. Up in these lands. Yep. You ever heard of, um, oh crap. What's the bird society? Um, American birders. Yeah, there's American birders. No, they're like research. Like it's like researchers. Like oh. it's like a government entity. I gotta look it up. I think it's like, crap, what is it? Might not even be a government entity. You ever go to the aviary in Pittsburgh? No. It's pretty cool. Is it cool? I'm a fan of that one. I would. Yeah. All right. I went to it, uh, I think it was two years ago. Hmm. Yeah, dude, it was. Merlin. Yeah, Merlin Bird app. You, I, dude, you that, that app, app? Is, Yeah, I have it. It's awesome. Josh, I didn't yeah. know that that was a, that was like a society of birders. What's the big no, deal with not. this app? I think it's Cornell. Cornell uh, does, okay. does work. That, that, that sounds about right. So that it's, makes a, sense. it's called the Merlin Bird app. Uh -huh. You pull it up, it records your audio, mm -hmm. and oh. it'll tell you like birds that are like sounding off. Like it'll give you, it's great in the mornings. Yeah, oh, it's so like whenever I go turkey hunting, man, and it's like still dark, dude, I'll set it up, and it'll um, it'll just tell me all the birds that are chirping around me. It's it's freaking sweet. Right. Will it pick up turkey? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I use it, dude. I love that app. That's the app where I use Josh. Remember when we had the fire podcast? Oh yeah. And I called in the bluebirds because uh -huh. you can you can play sounds. Oh yeah. And what I used to do in my backyard at uh, Westminster was I would just sit back there because there's such a big bluebird population up there. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite bird. Is the bluebird. Bird. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah, bluebird, eastern bluebird. Oh. Um, or sometimes like a Kentucky bluebird. Okay. Dude, they're like the coolest looking bird. They're they're blue. They're blue is like a very different blue compared to like a blue jays. Okay. Uh, um, but they're like a lot smaller as well. Um, but my neighbor, he had a box and 
there was a bunch. Like he gets he gets nests every year that they'll make, and then they'll uh, produce more bluebirds. That's awesome. Yeah, but I would always call them in, and they would just always come to the sound. It was really cool. That's really cool, man. I think I think it's frowned upon to do that in the bird community, but. To call birds. <laughs> yeah, they say it's like you, you put them in harm's way, I guess. Yeah. Oh. Because like if you call a bluebird in and say like a hawk's like, oh, yep. Yeah. I'm coming and whacking them. I guess that makes sense. There's a guy fishing over there. Yeah. Crazy story. I actually in that in that in our backyard over there, Josh. Yeah. At New Wilmington. I saw a Cooper's hawk fly out like midair and snag a bird. It was it was the coolest shit. Oh ever. wow. Yeah, it was it was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So whitetail and the elk hunt again for you, Tyler. Whitetail and mule deer and whitetail. Oh yeah, and elk. And elk, yep. Nice. You go to the same spot that you were last time? Um, no. So no. different unit. Different unit. I wasn't able to draw that one this year. Actually, draw results are coming out here soon. So you should know. I should know. I should know if I drew. And if I didn't draw, it's fine. Like there's over the counter opportunities, uh -huh. but I, I applied again for a muzzle loader tag. Nice. So there you go. So man, I'm hoping I, that that's like crazy that you do it with a muzzle loader. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. It's pretty cool, man. Iron sights too. No scope. Damn. Dude, you got to get Bold. pretty damn, you got to get pretty close to that then, huh? Yeah. Like I'm, my effective range is like a hundred yards. That's pretty good for iron sights. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, you gotta think, like elk are just huge, huge animals. You just gotta put it somewhere, somewhere broadside. If they're, if they're broadside to you, mm -hmm. you gotta put it somewhere in the bread basket. And, you know, those, like the technology for like those bullets and like right. the ballistics and stuff, it's pretty. Next um, level. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, as long as, you're, as long as you're making a good shot, you know, a good quality shot, ethical shot, is like the biggest thing. If you're not trying to extend the reach and. No. That's just, I guess it probably falls into the same category as uh, archery, you know? Yes. Where it's like, you know how far you are. Yeah, You exactly. must take a tumble, dude. <laughs> sure did. Hey, it takes These a little while. It takes right? a while to get used to the, um, to the, used to navigating the, the river. Yeah. It's a learning curve, but we're out here, you know? We really are. And I am still struggling with my line. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Dude, I think I'm cursed today. I don't know. How does that work? You just got to tie it on to the end? Yeah, I'm like trying to re... I messed up the leader, I think, when I tied it, so... Ow. That's what, uh... That's what got me. That'll do it. We got to do this more often. We do. We should do, uh... We could do, like, a, a little series. Like, we do, like, fly fishing this episode. Then mm -hmm. our, uh... Like, our outdoor event for the next one, we could do, like... Fishing in downtown Pittsburgh, River River yeah. Monster Edition. <laughs> river Monster Edition. Dude, I've caught some crazy shit out of that river. I caught um, on Father's Day a saw guy. So like a sauger mixed with a walleye. Yeah. Dude, it was like a zombie fish. It was the coolest fish I've ever caught in my life. Oh shit. All sorts of weird stuff in that river. Yeah. You may catch a body. Hey, chances are pretty high. If you tried hard enough, I bet you could. Yeah. So you ever how seen the is, guys that go it? magnet fishing? Oh, I've seen that. Oh, there was a guy that was doing it while I was fly fishing, dude. I was so pissed off. Yeah. I was like, dude, get out of here with that. Like, I'm right here. He's, <laughs> he didn't care. He was just whoop, blop, yeah. <laughs> scaring all the fish away. Like, come on, bro. It's the worst. Dude, I see, I see those all the time, clickbaity YouTube videos where it's like, cops, game. Well, I was yeah, magnet fishing. Yeah, we'll get like a uh, grenade or like <laughs> yeah. a handgun. It's like, oh, we, we found a, yeah, a handgun. Oh, he's like, oh, I found this brand new iPhone 10X. It's 10 years old. I'm like, dude, that's not even possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> brand new iPhone. Magnet fishing. All caps. Yeah. <laughs> it, would be kind of, it would be kind of fun to do, though. I will say that. I'm sure you could find like some random stuff and like some random streams mm -hmm. oh yeah especially like a big stream like pittsburgh yeah so so in potter county where i go and hunt sometimes there was this there's this story 
about this bank that way back in the early 1900s, they had this giant safe with a bunch of money in it. Huh. And uh -huh. over dur during that year, there was a huge flood in this town, just washed everything away, yeah. including this bank. And, they, and no one ever found this safe, allegedly. Really? Wow. And yeah, people are trying, people are trying to look for it, but it's scuba dive. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's actually true or not. If you believe yeah. the hype. But I will say, there was there was actually this story that I read on the meateater.com, which they do like a lot of like hunting outdoor like type content. Yeah. They're talking about there was this there was this gold that was hidden. Mm -hmm. Um, way back, like a very, very long time ago by some, like, like some, like arm, like some army. It was like during someone's presidency, like there was an army, they were carrying a bunch of gold, ended up like Almost got you. keeping it out in the woods Yeah. and like burying it or something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this guy apparently found it and he like notified someone about it Dumb. and <laughs> I don't know exactly what the story, like what, what like all happened in this story, but essentially this guy told like these police officers about it or whatever, that he found this gold. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then the next day there was like armor vehicles, giant trucks that came and took this gold, like dug it up, took it away. And this guy was like, what the heck? Like I found it. And right. basically there's no story about it. There's no like. They were just like there one day and then gone the next. Oh, and like, I mean, dude, that's how it works though. Like, I mean, from the movies that we all watch of like the treasure hunting, I think like some governing body in there would be like, oh man, I had a little bite. Did you? Yeah, I think it was a little smally. Would just like try to come in and take it. Yep. Yeah, it was like just like out of a movie kind of. I think of. that's why treasure hunting is so interesting, dude. It's such a thrill. Treasure hunting is interesting. It's like whose who's does it belong to at the end of the day, you know? Right. I love watching those like on the History Channel. Watching the, the treasure hunting stuff. Remember, they're like finding uh, gold. It's like, dude, it's so funny because the majority of the time they're like, they find like this little tiny thing that could be anything and they're like, oh my gosh. It's a nail from the treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They need the slightest like bit of re-encouragement that they're on the trail. Yeah, and then they end the episode. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> they're like, guess I'm watching till the next episode. <laughs> exactly. That was like what they did with uh, Shark Week with like Megalodon. Uh-oh. Remember yeah. that? Yes. They would always get you. That was like clickbait before clickbait was a thing. It really was. Shark, they were like, we're Shark Week. They We're on just the trail for Megalodon. Getting you engaged. It's still like a big deal, Shark Week. Shark Week is a huge deal. I love it. It's like I a whole two weeks now. I still love it. Josh, I might borrow an indicator off of you if you've got one on you. Yeah. I don't know what I just caught myself. Did you snagged up? Well, I got a little tangle. Uh, trying to find where the end is. Dude, I've oh, had more tangles and snag-ups than you did, and it's your first time fly fishing. I just haven't gotten any better. <laughs> um, yeah, you want an indicator? If possible, dude. Anytime. Thank you, good sir. This is a cool spot back here. It is. I don't think where it is. Where oh, wow, you're getting up there in the water with your tread over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, bro, <laughs> if I, I think it would have gone up Probably. Oh, if yeah. I kept going. Yeah, it gets, it gets way deep over here. Uh, it's just another one in like a smash up. I wonder when the last time he used this stuff was. I this know. Is like uh, a, what's he got in here? Probably some weights. No, this is some more flies. Oh, damn. Film container. It's got all of them. I have to remember where those were earlier. That's where oh. the original love of uh I oh. caught you. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. No, you're good, you're good. That was my fault, for sure. What are the Who odds? Pocket was that? You ever try to record on a or uh film? Film? Yeah. Uh no. Well, I've done the uh disposable yeah. stuff. Recording on there film would be a pain in that neck. Thank you. But I wanted to get into it a little bit. 
These little tiny fish hate this big fly for whatever reason. Yeah, they like attack it. They're like, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, it definitely got a little wet in here. <laughs> All the little minnows are attacking mine too. You know Brock? Greasehawk. Yeah, he yeah. said first day on the golf course and almost killed someone. <laughs> you serious? He's on like a bachelor trip. Oh boy. And we went to Top Golf the other day for like kind of to practice, but also just to like have fun. And uh, he was like nervous about it. I'm like, oh, don't don't be nervous about it. Like everybody sucks. Yeah, to that's some why, extent. That's the truth. That's why you pay to play. You know, none of us are pros. I'll give these back to you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm eager to see what he means by he almost killed someone. Yeah. I know uh, Jared on his birthday, mm -hmm. they went out golfing one time and he was with Kenny. The, yeah. uh, you met Kenny before. And they were on his birthday and like Jared was crushing beers and whatnot. And I guess he went to go like turn whenever he like was hit kenny was going to hit a shot or something and jared was on the hillside so he was like trying to turn yeah <laughs> kenny hits his shot and after after like, i guess jared turns the wheel he just absolutely smashed kenny with the golf cart really yeah <laughs> he was so mad the rest of the night i felt bad dude but like you see those videos of kids doing that yeah bro like you could break someone's back, like... Oh, it could mess somebody up for sure. 100%. There was, um, there was, like, a golf club at Seneca Middle School. Uh-huh. I was in for, like, a couple weeks. And I remember we went to Strawberry Ridge for one of our little, like, after-school activities. It was, like, me, Spencer Gross, and Connor Otway. And Connor Otway, like, drilled Spencer in the shin. Or maybe it was, <laughs> maybe it was Spencer drilled Connor in the shin. Like right off the tee box, he oh. wasn't like paying attention. Driver right to the shit. And I was like, that had to hurt so bad. But he like he toughed it out. He was like, oh, it wasn't bad. And we're like, bro, that had to hurt so bad. <laughs> I got a uh, I got a good baseball story that you'd appreciate, Tyler. Yeah. S speaking of hitting somebody, <laughs> I still feel bad about it to this day. So, I was, it was like BBA baseball, like our rec league, right? Mm -hmm. And. My dad was an assistant coach, and I was, I was two batters up. So, like, obviously I shouldn't have been in the on-deck circle. But I was like, ah, screw it. I'm going to go get some cuts in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I walk out of the dugout, and I grab, I grab, like, two baseball bats, and I start swinging them like a Babe Ruth. <laughs> and at the time... I was trying to be a switch hitter. Oh boy. Huh. So I was just swinging back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> and Joey Cardamone, shout out to Joey. Um, poor guy walks like behind me and because he thinks I'm swinging righty. So he steps behind me, dude. And then I go to swing back like I'm swinging lefty and absolutely crack him right in the chest oh, with a baseball man. bat, dude. Joey hit the ground like this. And I literally went, I just killed this kid. Like, I, I'm going to jail. And I felt so bad, dude. I literally just dropped the bat. So I'm like, oh, my God, dude, I just killed you, Joe. I'm like, Joe, you all right? Joe, you all right? Next thing you know, my dad comes out. He's like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> He's like, why are you even swinging out here? You're not even in the on deck circle. And I'm like, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. I thought I broke his lungs. Dude, that's, it's dangerous, man. Scary. Like, because my, so my, um, my coworker, he's like, he used to be in this, I'm not sure if he still is, but he used to be in the softball league. And uh -huh. he got, he was, um, he got cracked, like kind of like that in the side of the head. Oh my oh. gosh. Dude, he literally doesn't have hearing in his right ear anymore. Oh my Damn. gosh. It's not funny, but like. It's, dude, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy shit. Man. That is crazy. Honestly, the balls come at you so fast, too. Yes. That's like another one. It's like we always almost get drilled like every day. Well, were you, you were there whenever O'Neill Cruz hit a 121 yeah. mile an hour. You line have no drive time to react for that. 
What'd you say? We have no time. Yeah, there's no time to oh, react to that. No, like, no time. How fast that guy hits the ball is. He's juiced or something. Is insane. He's crazy. Well, dude, he, like. Can he speak any English? A little. I mean, they all can speak a little bit of English. Yeah. Probably just as but, much English as we can speak Spanish if we yeah. were. If we were around Spanish Almost. speaking all day. Like the Braves, are like everybody speaks Spanish on that team. But yeah. They're just like. I was telling Alex, they're very. They got a lot of swag. Oh. You know what I mean? Like they walk in there, like they know they're good. You know what I mean? Yep. And they got their big ass chains with like number eleven on it and shit. Yep. Well, man, you got to be at that level. You got to know you're good, or you're not lasting very long. Pirates don't have that swag. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> I'm gonna have to censor all of this, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut a little bit out. That's all right. You played a lot of baseball when you were growing up, though. All those travel leagues. A lot of baseball, man. But I feel like it's if you're going to like try to play it in the next level, you have to, right? Yeah. You can't just play high school. Yes, yes. And you you guys were talking about that last last episode about right. that just came out about oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. how AAU is ruining basketball, right? Uh -huh. That's what he was talking about? Yeah. Yep. Dude, I think, honestly... I think it's so watered down at this point because any, anyone and their mother can start an AAU team of any sport. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, like, there's some good teams, but there's also some really bad teams. Like, yep. the re it's, like, the same reason that, like, social media, everyone's on social media, you know, because anyone can do it. And you're finding right. false information and stuff. You could get some terrible coaches. Exactly. You can also get some really great coaches that like know a lot about the game and are, are willing to help. But it's just all about finding a good guy that knows the game. Yeah. You know, I spent a lot of time and I was pretty fortunate enough to have some good coaches. And like whenever I was playing, it was kind of like at the beginning of that of that AAU kind of trend. Yeah. Yep. We're like not everyone was doing it, but it was definitely there. And, yeah, and I had some good coaches for sure. But, yeah, at this point in time, man, it's, like, very much a money grab kind of scheme where, you know, people are spending thousands of dollars to send their kids to these programs and right, not great coaching. Yeah, it's insane. Like, I definitely agree. It's just it became a money grab where people were became opportunists, and they're like, oh, yeah, we can make a lot of money. Yeah. Telling these kids, like, yeah, you're good. We could see you playing at like college or something, and people use it as an opportunity. And it's yeah, just and, not I, good. and I, and I, I kind of disagree with this. Oh, shit. I kind of disagree with the fact that, um, that like kids should be specializing sports Agreed. at yeah. such an early age. I think what makes athletes good at the next level is their athleticism. 100%. And if you're not doing multiple sports, you're not developing that athleticism. 100%. At all. And they do, I, I forget what study it was, but they did like some study and they showed the injuries that people get from just playing one sport, mm -hmm. you know, because your body's so conditioned just to do like those certain things. You go to do a different type of movement like blow your knee out makes yep. a lot of sense yeah well think about think about this right so like for uh for jobs for warehouse jobs just for example yeah say someone is continuously loading something onto onto a conveyor belt uh-huh there's serious concerns about them getting injured and just because of consistent use, doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and not having any variety. Yep. That's why there's specific regulations on shift lengths and all that stuff because if you do the same thing over and over and over again, you're not working any other, any other muscles, anything else like that. And, yeah, like injuries are up, I feel like, in a lot of sports just because, you know, you do one thing over and over and over again. You're not going to be working anything else. Exactly. So, and that's where, that's where training comes into, into play. Like being able to lift and, and train, have good training routines, good training programs and stuff. Yeah. 
Good lifting. Dude, program. you got you got your workout regimen down pat now, huh? I do. How, how much has it changed from like whenever you played baseball? Because I feel like whenever I stopped playing basketball, I had to like really think about what I wanted to do just to be healthy. You know? Yes. Yeah. No. Like, it absolutely has fit. changed a lot. Absolutely. I mean, like whenever I was playing, man, I was. So I would. I would get up in the morning, I'd go down to the gym, or actually no, so, so my, my typical regimen was I'd get up in the morning, I'd go, oh, I thought you had me. I thought you I were thought on so too, I was <laughs> gonna like lose my mind. I'm like, dude, did I'm you just get rock, a hit? I think. <laughs> yeah, so, I, so I'd get up in the morning, I'd go, I'd go to the hitting facility that we had, yeah. I'd go take a bunch of swings, bunch of swings, you know, probably for like an hour or so. Uh -huh. I'd head back, um, either eat breakfast or whatnot, then I'd go to the gym, do like a bunch of lifting type stuff, just like power based stuff. Uh huh. And then I would go, um, and then I'd go to class and everything, go to practice, all that stuff, and and do like sprint work after practice, so like sprints and things like that, fast switch stuff. Wow. <clears throat> all before all before school, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I do the I do the practice and the fast switch stuff after class. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like I'm saying, the amount of oh. stuff that you were doing before class, yes, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Baseball, so, baseball really is like you got to put a lot of different things together to be a mm -hmm. good baseball player. You really do. I mean, it's like it's not just one thing, especially if you want to be a well-rounded player. Like if you want to hit well, if you want to throw well, you don't want to have arm issues, all yep. that stuff. That's the biggest thing nowadays is arm issues. Oh, yeah. yeah. Taking care of that stuff. But, but yeah, it has significantly changed since then. <laughs> we got I'm obviously squirrel. not swinging anymore. I, uh, what do you do now? Do you just do – like a mix of everything? So actually, I was kind of, I was kind of doing similar workouts to what I was doing before uh -huh. with baseball, where I would go and I, I'd do like full body type lifting stuff. Yeah. But I was getting really bored with it. So, yeah. so now what I do is in the morning, I'll, I'll go on like a rock with my dogs. I'll take my dogs, get 45 pound plate in my backpack. You need to fly, Josh? No, to I'm break good. off. I was just evaluating the area. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you were saying, Ty? You yeah, yeah. So, so I'd go on a ruck, it's probably like a mile and a half or so with the dogs in the morning, 45 pound pack. And then I'd come back. I'd, um, and, and now what I'm doing is I'm doing like a kettlebell only, dumbbell only type workout. Okay. So, like, I'll do like a full body kettlebell, like 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off, something like that where it's like 24, 25 different exercises. And actually, Fitness with Roxanne is the YouTube. Fitness with Roxanne. She really? She is awesome, man. She's some Australian chick, she makes videos of, of like kettlebell workouts. It's 30 minutes long and she gives you the timer, the workout, all that, all that stuff. And it's amazing. Gets your, sweet. Gets your blood pumping, moving, all that stuff. And then, so that's what I do in the morning. Then I'll eat breakfast. And then in the afternoon, I'll go on another walk with the dog. Okay. I'm not What's, a huge fan of running. I know a lot of people like running. I can't get behind it, dude. I've gotten into the running a little bit. But Have you? Yeah. Little, little not like grind. long distance, but like one or two, three, four or five miles. Really? From time to time. That's awesome. Um, I don't know. I hit like that, I don't want to say quarter life crisis, but I was like, man, I haven't done anything like really aerobic in a while like you know what i mean yes. like i wasn't like been running around playing hockey or baseball or anything so i was like i should probably like try to stay fit and uh so i was like i'm gonna say, start running a little bit nice did my first 5k in the fall the turkey trot you know heck yeah and the turkey trot's kind of fun honestly mm -hmm. if you've ever done one of those yeah yeah but i want to do like a I wasn't able to do it this year, but the like Pittsburgh Marathon 5K. Yeah, dude. Too. Absolutely. You I think I think that's it. good, man. I think it's good to challenge yourself, like doing some of that stuff, because I mean, running is not very comfortable. No, it's different for sure. You gotta. It's all mental, though. Like. Yeah, it is. It really is. I I just I prefer walking so much more. Uh -huh. That that's that's kind of how I just incorporated it. Like I'm like I love to hike. I love to do that stuff. So. Yeah. I'm just going to I'm just going to embrace that and not try and force myself to <laughs> make Hiking's sense. a heck of a workout too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just us walking back through these woods getting here, mm -hmm. like I was cracking a sweat. Yeah, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, back in here. Shit. That walk down to here was even through the water. Central. Yeah, dude, especially if you're like bushwhacking it, which I usually do, like just walking through thick, thick brush. Yeah. Like just straight up hills. 
It'll get you going. I see you. I see your stories every day. Yeah. Every day. 4.30. Every day, man. Walking the dog. We're Is there, out there. Do you see anybody else out whenever you're uh I'll see one other person usually. I don't know who he is. He's definitely one of my neighbors, but he wears that. Oh, that's a big hole. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I just went down like two feet. <laughs> he, wears a, he wears a reflective vest all the time, so whoever yeah. that guy is. There's a dude in our neighborhood that, uh, or I, I don't know if it's a dude or a girl, but they are out there every morning, 4.30. They go past and the ring doorbell, like notices them, and it's like motion detected. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. They have like a little headlamp on? Yeah. Do you have like a headlamp on? No, nah, just... I just go straight darkness. I like it. Yeah. When was the last time you didn't wake up early in the morning, Ty? The last time, dude, I can't even remember. It's been <laughs> it's been a while. I mean, like on the weekends, I don't necessarily wake up like that early. Like this morning, I woke up at 530. But like, I couldn't tell you the last time I slept in past six. I don't think my body allows me to anymore, which is kind of rough at times. You're just programmed. You're all in trained now. up for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's actual people out there that it's like can't physically do it because they are such night people? That can't get up early? Yeah. I think absolutely there's a different type of like I, I think you can train yourself to, uh -huh. but I don't. I honestly wouldn't recommend that. If you're more productive at night, do that. Go for it. I the reason that I get up so early is because I'm not very productive at night. Me like, neither. I, I kind of get lazy at night, so I got to get all my stuff done that I need to get done early in the morning, or it's not going to get done. But other people, like people that like going to the gym late at night, or they like running late at night, or they just like staying up late at night. I think that that's perfectly fine. And, and as long as you're getting good sleep, right? You know, it doesn't matter if you're like, it's the same, it's the same exact thing, just an opposite schedule. Exactly. So I, I, I am all for, I, I don't think that you should force yourself to do something that isn't like, that doesn't fit your persona, your like, your I, personality, your psych, your psychology. I firmly believe that like most creatives, if we took a survey, are more productive at night, it seems like. Yes. For some reason. Like, I always edit better at night. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know why it is, but if I'm making an edit at like 9 a.m., it's not gonna be as good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy because I'm the exact opposite. Really? If I'm in the morning, I'm just like, I'm so focused and I'm, I'm just on. I'm sure I could, like you said, like train myself to, like, I'm not staying up till like 2 a.m. to do an edit, but like from, Honestly, from like seven to like 10 o'clock yeah. are like my most productive hours. Yeah, dude, and it, why would you fight that? Yeah. Why would you try and fight that, you know? If that's something that works for you, why would you Why would you stray away from it? Thought I was on. Thought you got one. <laughs> Thought I was on, I snagged into a rock. So that's that's my mindset, you know? It's like not, I don't think it's, I don't think it's important when it happens. Yeah. It's just so hard, I think, to work a, if you work like a normal job, to be like a night person. Yes. You know? Yep. And not, if you want to like get stuff done in the morning, mm -hmm. or get stuff done. How's it going? Oh, we're hanging in there. Pretty good. Trying to catch some fish. Beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. Any luck so far? You get anything so far? Nice. What color are you using? Sorry, Truce. What are you going for, Smallies? Yeah. Nice. Very cool. We have, yeah, we haven't seen any, uh, any trout, but I saw a little Smallie over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Little guys. There's some huge carp about half a mile upstream. Huge. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close enough, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you too. Thanks. 